Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel on the pole barn project. So I'm out here today working on fascia and I've already got the uh, Eve fascia put up and um, that, that's pretty simple uh, job. Uh, but now I'm working on the gable fascia and I wanted to do a video on this because this is kind of an interesting topic. Um, when you have a really generous roof overhang like I do in this case, I'm going to be putting up uh, brackets both for architectural styling and to support these uh, overhangs on the gable end um, and when you're doing that and really when you're building any gable overhang, overhang uh, you want it to be strong but you also want it to be lightweight okay so if you build this thing if you overbuild it if you throw up like a you know two by eight uh, uh, fly rafter or a rake board uh, that's going to be super strong but it's also going to be very heavy and that's going to encourage the structure to sag over time and so when you're building out an overhang and putting up your fascia and integrating everything, it's really uh, a game of making something that's strong but also lightweight. And so let's um, move the camera, set it up over here. We'll go up on the ladder and talk about this in more detail. All right, so um, we're up here on the ladder to talk about our, our gable fascia and the support structure. And there, there's a lot going on here. Uh, you know, the, the basic purpose of your overhang, of course, is to shelter your structure. But it's also got to carry some roof loads uh, from up above, unsupported in most cases. Uh, you generally want the width of your fascia on the gable end to match up what's going on on the event so everything's nice and continuous. And so all those things kind of drive your decisions. Now, very typically what you'll see on an overhang is a pretty beefy board over here. It's usually called uh, the fly rafter or the fly rake. It's basically um, a, a rafter that's really just hanging out uh, by itself in space. Uh, it's tied back into the main roof through some cross ties, um, but it's really functioning to stiffen up this edge and, and transmit whatever roof loads occur between the main structure and, and this edge back onto the, to, uh, that first rafter and maybe the second rafter. And, uh, you know, as I mentioned, um, if you were just going after maximum strength, you know, in this case, I would throw up a two by eight, um, and that would just be a, like a one board solution to this problem. There's a couple issues with that. First of all, when you're attaching that, you'd be screwing into the ends of your blocking. Uh, screwing into an end grain is not real strong, and so that's not a great way to attach a big heavy board. And then the second one is that it's a big heavy board. And you know, you, you want these overhangs to be stiff and strong and not sag the last thing you want to do when you're building out your overhang is put a big heavy board on there which is going in to encourage it to to sag over time and so um, one good solution is to build up what i like to call a web structure where you've got basically your blocking coming out uh, under the purlins and then you put a top cord a bottom cord which are attached by these blocks and then also by your fascia board when you put that on afterwards. And really what you're doing here is you're kind of building an I-beam in a sense. I mean, that's really how an I-beam works. You've got, you know, top and bottom cords that, that carry tension and compression. They can handle a lot of load. And then there's some kind of a webbing in between that uh, attaches those, those outer uh, parts of the beam. Uh, to, to make everything work together. And there's a lot going on in an I-beam. I could probably do a separate video just all about that, but really um, uh, with vertical loads, uh, you're gonna have compression up here, tension down here, and then shear in between in this web that keeps everything together. So a lot goes on in an I-beam, a lot goes on in this structure, but this is just a really good approach to build a stiff, strong, uh, lightweight overhang uh, and fascia without putting a big heavy board out there um, that could defeat the whole purpose of what you're trying to do. And so, you know, again, this is a matter of taking my blocking that came out underneath the purlins, attaching a top and bottom cord, and then I uh, screw down my fascia board. You can nail this down as well. And that's pretty much it. There's a little bit more labor involved in doing it this way, just because you're dealing with multiple pieces, but, you know, compared to, especially if you're working alone, hoisting up a big heavy uh, two by eight trying to get it in position uh, that's not easy either and uh, this way you're spreading out your fasteners it's something i've talked about in past videos you don't want to concentrate fasteners you don't want to be screwing into end grains and so we're attaching uh, across the grain uh, we're spreading out our fasteners and then we're really uniting things with the fascia board when it goes on in the end so 
think that's going to wrap it up for this video. And just remember, you know, when you're building your overhang and your fascia, uh, the goal is stiff, strong, and light. And this is a really good way to do it. Thanks for watching.